this is uh, a catastrophe because now you have corporations who do not have the, the health and wellness of society uh, it's, it's, or its infrastructure or the ways that the social programs are put together uh, at, at the best interest. Not at all. And this is, this is concerning uh, as an individual, and I recognize this is a problem that's been going on for some time. We know who they are. Uh, the Bilderberger Group, quite clearly, is a piece of it. The Trilateral Commission is another. Council of Foreign Relations uh, in the United States is another. And in Canada, our Canadian Council of Chief Executives. These are the corporate people of the world. And the most frightening thing, which really sort of uh, should have woken up our country, um, was when the Security and Prosperity Partnership meetings were held here in uh, just outside of Ottawa, in 2007, when Ron Covey, who works for Lockheed Martin, um, one of the world's largest munitions dealers, whose products really aren't really good for anybody, um, when he came out and said to the media that the message from the ministers, our ministers, our government, was uh, tell us what needs to be done and we'll just do it, meaning that the changes they need to make to provide for the infrastructure for uh, integrating, and we call it now deep economic integration, integrating uh, three sovereign states together, uh, basically, all these decisions are happening behind closed doors, without public debate, without public uh, uh, opinion, without without uh, a democratic vote, in a way that completely subverts our democratic process, and we are blind to it. We're going to wake up one day to this Amero, North American Union, which, uh, as sovereign states, we have not only have an obligation to ourselves as citizens, we have a, a historical obligation to the memory and the, uh, the valor of individuals, men and women, who have stood up for de defending sovereignty across these nations uh, during times of war and peace. And to belay that entire history of what we've all stood for to bring our countries to self-rule and self-governance and self-dictation as to where our future goes to be uh, blindly led by a few individuals exactly. who really have the uh, own... This, this is, this is uh, a tragedy, and uh, it needs a global awakening, and only the citizens can come together to, uh, to put a stop to this. And this is what has to happen, and that's why I'm here now. Exactly, indeed, and we do appreciate all your inputs uh, for our beloved listeners as well. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, we know that uh, 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 it was about two months ago, your prime minister, uh, I forgot his name right now, what was your prime minister's uh, name? Uh, Mr. Beg your pardon? Stephen Harper. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mr. Stephen Harper uh, came to New Orleans with Mr. Bush and then the, the other comrade uh, from uh, the president of Mexico uh, came together uh, for final stages of the North American Union and it was closed door and uh, it was very strange for us as American two we about two we two and a half weeks before uh, the your CBC made uh, uh, Mini series called Trojan Horse, and it was uh, in that movie exactly showed how they manipulate the vote of the will of the uh, people's uh, democratic uh, uh, Republic of uh, uh, Canada. That uh, you know always with one percent. First, uh, it was uh, 51 to 49. Uh, 51 percent said no to the North American Union, and then 49% uh, yes. Then they change it yeah. opposite. Yeah. I mean, isn't that weird? Yeah, Go ahead. yeah when, when the Canadian people have been polled, uh, about one and two sort of see this North American Union as inevitable, and that, doesn't, that, does, that, that does not imply that, that that's acceptance is that it, it basically tells you, as a society, as individuals, we've kind of acquired a learned helplessness, is that we feel that we no longer are empowered uh, as individuals and as a collective will to shape the future foundations of the nations that our forefathers have built for us. And that that is a cry in and of itself. However, uh, that this is actually going on, and this can be stopped uh, from our perspective. The Security and Prosperity Partnership and uh, these uh, competitive council uh, working groups 
these have to be stopped, they have to be stopped, and they have to be stopped immediately and right now. But our governments are complicit in the whole process, and it really leaves you uh, at odds with, uh, well, we do democratically elect these people into power, yet they're, they're following more of a corporate line. They're turning our parliament buildings into a five-star hotel. Uh, the similar things have happened corporately in the United States as well. And uh, this exactly. is basically security and prosperity for the few. Exactly. And uh, unfortunately, one of, one of the core ways by which any nation uh, can hold on to its, its reins is its economic sovereignty, and we have given them that up freely in, in 1970s in Canada. Before that, you know, Canada has the only publicly owned bank uh, in North America. Our Bank of Canada was created for us. It's owned by us. But in 1974, uh, we joined the, the, the G7 at the time, and we've sort of adopted these, the, the, the policies which the International Monetary Fund and World Banks want the individual countries not to rely on their own banking, but to put all their, their financing to the private banking industry. And by doing so, we have basically given the reins of control of the sovereignty of our currency and its issuance and our credit. And by doing so, you destroy nations that way because nations come under usury and the financial crises that emerge basically put the entire society uh, at the beck and call where the individuals who profit off you use your own money and goodwill and workforce to uh, advance their agenda, which is to basically more solidify their global domination or globalization, as they want to call it. Um, uh, but this is, this is our own free will doing that. And in Canada... The Canadian Action Party stance is uh, we need to return back to our Bank of Canada and uh, use the Bank of Canada to fund our infrastructure rather than paying inordinate uh, uh, compound interest on loans to private banks uh, and it doesn't come back to us. Uh, and by doing so uh, is the means to uh, regain exactly. control of our financial systems because until you do that, in, in the history of the United States, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, tried this. In fact, it's ironic that uh, President Lincoln has said, well, I have the South in front of me and the international banking groups behind me, and I'm more concerned about the international banking groups. Um, he created a greenback back then, and, you know, we see in societies that when you rely upon the goodwill and the uh, organizational structures of society to build itself and to profit from its own hard work, that is to the benefit of society, but we've given that away, not only in terms of the resources as well as the monetary controls and now our, our, our economic integration, which is happening, and the ability to self-regulate and what, what values and rules and regulations we choose to follow as nations, they're being, uh, they're being removed from our power where you now have uh, corporations and regulatory bodies and individuals who have no accountability to a democratically elected system are making changes to the very fabric that we call and identify ourselves with our nationhood. And when that happens, you no longer are nations. You are collections of individuals telling a line that you're being directed upon by you don't know who, by where, but rest assured, it'll be sold to you as in your best interests. But in the end, uh, it's in the interest of the few. And uh, this is a calamity. And the, that the, the media uh, projects a common uh, propaganda that basically programs the populace as a whole to believe one thing when uh, you no longer have the avenues of discontent or, or alternative opinions and a true reflection of what's going on in the world, then you have a population that really doesn't have the proper information to make these decisions. And unfortunately, um, the media, and exactly. by and large, in the mainstream, has been usurped. Uh, there's barely any publicly uh, owned private uh, individual voices in Canada anymore. We hear the same message, and uh, the messages are very much tailored to uh, moving us towards an incremental changes to uh, uh, marching to this New World Order and North American Union Trilateral Commission uh, uh, sponsored ideas, which is all pretty much right wing, and it basically puts us back into the confines of being enslaved, uh, enslaved by our own uh, by our own democracy, which is no longer democratic. Exactly, indeed. I'm with you 100%, uh, Dr. Maldon. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is, uh, uh, I mean, the history repeats itself again. I mean, why, uh, why they, I mean, it's impossible. You know, Mexican, American, Canadian, they have totally three different cultures. They have a, uh, totally different uh, uh, perspectives. 